The 1993 movie Groundhog Day begins on February 1st. We're close enough to the moment this year uh, for all the hubbub out of Pennsylvania to be fresh in at least some of our minds if COVID or East Coast storms or U.S. politics don't obscure it. The story, as you may recall, turns on a television weatherman from Pittsburgh who goes to Punxsutawney to uh, cover Groundhog Day. The next morning, the second, actually Groundhog Day, he wakes up to the radio playing, I gotcha, babe. He does his job, if half-heartedly. We also get a picture of what a jerky is. Then, despite his earlier predictions to the contrary, a winter storm blows through the town, forcing him and his crew to stay the night. The next day he wakes up to find it isn't the next day, it's the one he just went through. He finds himself trapped inside a time loop where each repeating day begins again with I gotcha babe on the radio. As they say, hilarity ensues. He is condemned to play out that day over and over again. As it turns out, until he becomes a new and better person. It's a sweet story, well told and well acted. Today, it's considered one of the best movies of the 1990s. Some spiritual leaders quickly noticed the spiritual angle. Christians, Jews, and Buddhists have explored meanings to be found within the film, generating a lot of articles, uh, sermons, and Dharma talks. One of the principal Buddhist glossy magazines, Lion's Roar, featured a good example in a 2018 article um, where uh, the Buddhist author Wes Nisker is cited uh, sharing his take on the film uh, co-created by Harold Ramis and, and Danny Rubin, uh, but focusing principally on Ramis's contribution. After all, he's been described as, quote, an ethically responsible spiritual pluralist with Jewish roots and Buddhist tendencies. I love that description and feel if you added in Christian and rational humanist to the tendencies, you're probably describing a Unitarian Universalist congregation, like the Fellowship of San Miguel. Ours is, after all, the original open source religion. Our faith is dynamic and questing. We count among us as beloved members, people who are all about the spiritual, and others who can't quite figure out what that word is supposed to mean. Ours is a covenantal community, as we heard earlier. In some parts of the country, and historically with an actual physical written down document, and covenant rather than contract, meaning between people, but in the face of some larger vision. Historically, that would be God. Today, and throughout much of the association, the covenant is not written down, or ideally is actually written on our hearts. Although in most congregations, there is still a physical membership book that one signs. The covenant, in whatever shape, is a deal to be present to each other and to that larger vision, which is open and dynamic, but as real as can be, as real as a heart attack, as real as visiting a dying friend. In the Upada Sutta, one of the ancient Pali texts that purport to record the acts and words of Gautama Siddhartha, who we call Buddha, we get something about what I find we gather as Unitarian Universalists to find. It expresses the very heart of our covenant, I, I believe, in my paraphrase of the passage, one day while walking quietly together, out of the silence, the Buddha's attendant, Ananda, declared, teacher, to have companions and comrades on the great way is so amazing. I have come to realize that friendship is fully half of the spiritual life. They proceeded along quietly for a while more before out of that silence, the Holy One responded, no dear one. Without companions and comrades, no one can live into the deep, finding the true harmonies of life to achieve authentic wisdom. 
to say it simply, friendship is the whole of the spiritual life. Friendship, intimacy. The deal we've cut when we sign our covenant is to remain present to each other, to learn from each other, to grow deep together. It is a dynamic manifestation of love for each other, for ourselves, for this world. And from that place, we find a need to act usefully in this world. Of course, we fail at it all the time. So I'm grateful that even as we fail, we also get to try it again. Like that story in Groundhog Day. When I was in seminary, the term was AFKI, another freaking growth experience. Although most people didn't use the word freaking. This isn't always fun. We try, we fail, we try. Well, it goes on and on. It is the mystery of human community and the mystery of human possibility. Sometimes getting it right, often getting it wrong, but picking ourselves up and starting over again. Groundhog Day, spiritual community. I think of when my mother died. She had been ill for a while and we were lucky that she was able to die at home with us. I was serving our community in suburban Phoenix. It was the church reaching out that meant so much in that hard time before her death and very much after. While I was the minister of that church, I was fortunate that a neighboring UU minister took the role that really only professional ministers can fill. Not all of it. The congregation's ministry was just as important, sometimes more important, but I got it all. That was a moment of getting it right. And an inspiration to me in all the years since, sometimes getting it right, often not, but then getting to do it again. The cycles of life and love. As some of you know, and you may have picked up, my spouse Jan and I are thinking about our next steps in our lives. One of the important things for us is finding something that includes community. I've looked at what it is you all do and your various ministries. I'm fascinated with how you've been able to create an ongoing fund to help people with the needs of people in the larger San Miguel area. I especially think of your focus on education, environment, health, housing, and immigration as powerful expressions of what money can do when put to use through a vision of radical interdependence. What a ministry. And I know people have stepped up to the plate with bodies and hands as well. I'm amazed at your care network, and I'm fascinated with how the congregation has begun to reach out beyond the expat community to share, well, our good news, that pluralist vision, that bringing of our spiritual values into the world. It's a different spiritual message and one that needs to be heard. I'm impressed by your volunteer ministry and your professional ministry, complimentary things. As I've said, out of my own experience, not exactly the same, but they overlap and both are critical to the establishment of those webs of connection and support, which gives a deep joy to our lives. I see this as the manifestation of our great insight of radical interdependence. What the late Vietnamese Buddhist teacher Thich Nhat Hanh called interbeing, something dynamic and holy, and an invitation into a spiritual groundhog day, are working and assessing and working more as a profound spiritual practice, which opens us into the mysteries of interbeing. COVID's been hard. It has cur curtailed many of this church's activities especially being able to be present to each other in a physical way. Two years now, and counting. 
I'm hopeful that this year will bring an end to the pandemic, a shift to endemic, just one more nasty thing that runs through our lives. There could be another vibrant building up even as I'm speaking, but looking to other pandemics, it is genuinely possible we're slowly coming to the end of this nightmare. And all of it, one more AFKI, another freaking growth experience. We see our human condition as one that is marked by wounds, some quite deep, and yet we can find healing here, right here. Our way is not world denying, it is life affirming. We see a need for a larger vision of the world than we get if we only live for ourselves. And so in joining a congregation like this, we each in our own way, each as best we can give of ourselves to make something happen. And that opens other questions. What are we willing to do to support the mission, to support this fellowship, to support this work? In this place where our spiritual aspirations are given a cradle, where they are nourished, and from which we can go out into the world inspired and prepared, what are you willing to do to support it? This community needs your time and your energy. Right now, a lot of what is done is attenuated, although I can tell you how grateful I am for Zoom gatherings. But in the moment, it's also easy to forget what it takes to keep this up and going. The practical, the physical, and a word from a friend watching you. This community, this amazing fellowship in San Miguel can only exist because you care and you are willing to take on the various tasks that make it what it is. A home for an engaged spirituality, for friendship as the whole of the spiritual life. Let's not be shy about it. The fellowship needs your money. We've just heard about that. Your annual operational fund drive has begun. It's especially hard to do something like this in a plague year, but it needs to be done. The work, it never stops. I'm much taken with Jesus' story of the widow's might, and those who have little but give generously out of what they have deserve being held up ever as much as those who give larger amounts but smaller parts of their resources. There are members of our UU communities for, who, for whom a $100 pledge is an incredible expression of commitment. And if that's your situation, on behalf of the vision of this community, thank you so much. And all we ever ask within our UU communities is for people to be as generous as is reasonable considering their circumstances. That old line for us is not to give until it hurts but to give until it feels right and just and good. So if you're not in that position of terribly straightened conditions, I'm asking you to seriously consider a much larger pledge than you have given in the past. A lot goes on here and a lot more is in the offing. Visions abound. This community has been around a long time and it sure looks like it's going to be around longer. It has done much, and no doubt there is much more to do. So <clears throat> I'm asking you to think about that and what you might actually be able to do to support the mission, to support the work, to support the covenant, to support this community. The great Unitarian minister, A. Powell Davies, sang to us about who we are and what we're up to when he told us, when individuals meet, so do private worlds. None of our private worlds is big enough for us to live a wholesome life. We need the wider world of joy and wonder, of purpose and venture, of toil and tears. What are we, any of us, but strangers and sojourners forlornly wandering through the night until we draw together and find the meaning of our lives in one another, dissolving our fears in each other's courage, making music together and lighting torches to guide us through the dark. We belong together. Love is what we need to love 
and to be loved. This is the project. This is the mission. This is the covenant. As ethically responsible spiritual pluralists with Jewish and Christian roots and Buddhist and rationalist humanist tendencies, we offer something amazing in this world. As we work and sometimes succeed, sometimes fail, but commit to pause and notice, to learn from the moment, and then to go forward, we become a light before the nations. Let's recommit to the dreams of our ancestors, to the promises of our covenants to presence, to take advantage of the possibilities for ourselves, for our friends, for this wonderful, sad, beautiful, and broken world. Please allow this work not just to survive, but to flourish. These times, they're hard. What we do is more needed than ever. Please give it your heart. Please give it your time. And please, now that you've been asked, support it with the most generous pledge you can. Thank you. And amen. Hymn 21, For the Beauty of the Earth, by led by Community Church of New York's Jonathan Long, accompanied on the piano by Gerald Brown. 